<laughs> Remus Repeal Reserve Series 5, containing the oldest MGP bourbon yet in this blend. How old? Stay tuned on the mash and drum. What's up folks, I am Jason C from The Mash and Drum and today we are reviewing the latest edition of Remus Repeal Bourbon distilled by the ever popular MGP out of Indiana, but the brand itself was recently acquired by Luxco to manage. This year will mark the first time that Luxco will be releasing the older brother to the flagship 94 proof George Remus Bourbon. Now the previous four releases of this bottle in particular have all been blends of 10 to 12 year old high rye Indiana bourbon with series two through four bottled at 100 proof. Now this one on the other hand is on a whole nother level. So the bourbon itself is named after half hero, half villain, George Remus. He was a son of Cincinnati. Starting as an apothecary, he soon found a loophole or two in the Volstead Act to craft bourbon for medicinal purposes. Knowing a great opportunity when he saw it and a great bourbon when he created it, he began his prohibition empire and he respected the Volstead Act, but to him was really just a mere suggestion. His story is full of intrigue, including going from being a lawyer to an apothecary, to a bootlegger, to a millionaire, to a murderer. For a Cliff Notes version of the story, check out my Remus Volstead bourbon review, uh, or read The Bourbon King, which is the great book called The Life and Crimes of George Remus Bourbon, Prohibition's Evil Genius. It's a fantastic story for all you bourbon nerds out there. I mean, the guy did some really crazy shit. So this limited edition release first hit shelves in November of 2017, Remus Repeal Reserve, the premium brand in the George Remus lineup has been well received from the beginning, it's, uh, being 100 proof, high age bourbon that typically combines multiple ages of MGP's high rye bourbon recipes. Each release seemed to get a bit older as it went along and now the fifth expression of Remus Repeal Reserve, the Series 5, is made up of barrels laid down from 2005 to 2008 making it by far the oldest average Remus Repeal Reserve yet. So do some math, this means that the barrels in the blend range from roughly 13 years to 16 years old. The majority, 67% of this year's Series 5 blend is the same 2008 bourbon that was used uh, for Series 4. All right, so this is bottled at 100 proof. You can see I put a pretty good dent in it already. As I mentioned, the majority in this blend, 13 year old high rye whiskey, there's still a fairly significant amount of 15 and 16 year old bourbon in the blend as well. The best part about this bottle is the price. Now I'm gonna pour this real quick. Nice dark color on this baby. Even though we have some higher age bourbons in this blend, the MSRP has only went up five bucks from 85 to only 90. I think it's pretty amazing considering the amount of money folks spend on sourced MGP bourbons and what you're seeing folks spending on anything from Buffalo Trace at less than half the age of what's in this bottle. Honestly, that's fine with me. You know, leave this on the shelf or leave it alone. I'm, I'm fine with it. But I think the secret's kind of out on this already, unfortunately. So let's try it. Here we go. Now we will do a comparison to uh, batches three and four and also the Remus Volstead, the one that I mentioned earlier. So we'll see how they stack up. The first thing you get on this is just super sweet, delicious oak. It's not over oaked by any means. There's a nuttiness quality to it. And I'm getting like almonds, like roasted almonds, chocolate covered almonds, that's what it is. It's like chocolate and almond together. The rye spice is there for sure. And it also starts to bring out this orange spice, which is something very, you know, something very usual you get with MGP. This uh, has been down the shoulder for at least a few days. So it's really opened up really nicely. 
Yeah, rye spice, orange spice, ton of cinnamon and baking spices here. I get like a dark fruit note. I want to say it's like cherry cola a little bit. Well, cherry cola isn't exactly a dark fruit, but you know what I mean, cherry. But uh, it reminds me a little bit of Remus 3, which had a very kind of a flat cherry cola note to it. But it's got a nice spice kind of like uh, 4 did. So it'll be interesting to compare those a little bit. I mean, just beautiful, beautiful sweet oak. I mean, it's a really, you know, perfect example of high aged MGP. And anyone that gets scared of, you know, bourbons that could be 15, 16 years old, if you do it right, you know, you get some really nice sweet oak flavors, you know, this is kind of what you get. So very, very impressive nose and it just gets better as it opens up. Here we go, cheers. So on the palate immediately, really, really beautiful spice, especially on the finish. That spice just carries all the way through. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, spice, pepper, black pepper. There's like this butterscotch toffee thing going on in here. God. I mean, it, it's, it's just such a delicious 100 proofer. So more of the chocolate, like the chocolate covered orange peels come out a little bit too, which I love. Sometimes it's a note that I get with um, with uh, George Dickel stuff, like the higher age stuff, but without, you know, this has that, but without that minerality, this is all like sweet, like milk chocolate, orange, orange peel, spice, like almost like a very spicy herbal tea with that orange. Oh, it's all like wrapped up with the chocolate. Again, that nuttiness is still there. Beautiful, beautiful sweet oak on the palate. It's a... Uh, Man, this is kind of like everything you want in a really beautifully balanced MGP. Go for another sip. Yeah, the spice just kind of stays from, it, it wavers a little bit on the mid palate. You get it right up front, it wavers a little bit in the mid palate, and then it comes screaming back on the back end. Along with like a little bit of a, like a toasted marshmallow note, I think I'm getting. A little toasted marshmallow. Again, more of the chocolate, more of the spice. You know what's also interesting is the, the mouthfeel on this. Even for a 100 proof bourbon, it's kind of silky. Silky, sweet, smooth. Now, as you sip this, I will say, you know, once, you're, once your palate gets used to those, those really nice flavors that I was describing, the almond, the chocolate, the citrus, a little bit of the toffee, the black pepper, marshmallow, all of it. You know, as you sip this, I will say the oak does start coming a little bit to the to the forefront here. You know, it starts getting a little bit more oaky. I'm not sure if this is going to happen as it gets even farther down the bottle. But man, the finish on this thing goes on for days. I love the spice, the lingering of it, the lingering spiciness of it. I, I would I would say that's the only knock I could give this is that maybe after a little or a few sips, it does, the oak starts to come a little bit forward. But let's compare to three, four, and the Volstead to see how it goes. All right, guys, so this is a pretty sick lineup. Absolutely love this. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have another bottle of two or one. I finished those and then never found them again. So we're gonna be comparing to three, four, uh, and then actually the Remus Volstead 14 year bottle and bond, which is another special release that came out last year. I have a tad bit left, as you can see, uh, but this is 14 years old. So I'm curious how it compares. Let's start with the three first. Now, if I remember, three was pretty oaky and also very cherry forward. Oh man, that's still holding true. Really good sweet oak, again, on this one. Way more like vanilla, like vanilla, like cherry vanilla, like cherry Garcia ice cream. Ooh. Again, still get the nice orange spice. Not as much oak as I think I'm getting from the five, as compared to the five. Oh yeah, the five has way more sweet oak influence to it. Whereas the three is coming off more of that dark fruity character. Let's try it. Oh, three is so good. Three is, three is just drinking cherry Garcia ice cream. Vanilla, tons of cherry, a little bit of like a cola note, some good sweet oak there. Not as much of an oak influence and I'm not getting as much spice as I was getting on the five. So, I mean, this bottle's been open for a little bit. 
It's so on the dark fruit side of things, it's so good. All right, let's go to four. So four comes off more, I get more of the rye spice on four. Yeah, a little bit more of the rye spice, the orange. This one comes off to me more like an orange cream sickle. So we're kind of staying in the we're kind of staying in the ice cream family here, I think. Yeah, a little bit more orange cream sickle, a little bit more spice. Oh god, these all smell so damn good. So when you come off four and compare it to five. Yeah, five just has more of those like rich caramel, rick house. Uh, sweet oak notes that it's got kind of a mix of the flavors in here in five but you just add that overlaying sweet oak uh, presence to it all right let's try four yeah see four to me is a little bit more rye forward more of the orange little hints of like a little touch of mint there too not like rye whiskey but I just feel like you get more of the spiky like cinnamon orange you know, uh, like the high right now, it's a little bit of like an herbal type capacity to it that you kind of get with a, with a nice high right MGP. Yeah, four to me didn't have the depth that either three or even five does. You go to five. Five has, oh man, I just got a whole bunch of chocolate on five just coming off that one. Ooh, a whole bunch of chocolate. Chocolate covered almonds all day long on that. Wow. I mean, that just like hit my palate. Like, uh, I mean, that was, I mean, sometimes you have to search for notes. That one was very clear. <laughs> just chocolate covered almonds, especially coming off of this one. So three has that cherry, the dark fruit richness to it. But actually the finish is kind of a little bit muted. Four, you're getting a little bit more rye forward, more of the orange cream sickle type stuff, the vanilla, the little bit more spice, a little hint of mint, some grassiness, some herbalness to it. Um, it's got the finish to it, but it doesn't have the depth of the oak that I'm getting either on uh, number three or five. Five kind of has the best of both worlds here. The rich caramels, the toffee, that chocolate almond. I feel like the cherry is in there, just not as prevalent as you get on the three. Five also has kind of a little bit of the nice rye spice and the peppery kick that the four does. So it's kind of a beautiful combo of both of these in five. All right, let's go to Volstead here. Well, Volstead actually might match it a little bit here in the oak. Yeah. So the Volstead's pretty close as, as kind of like on the nose aspect of it. Get the chocolate, the orange. Yeah, the Volstead's very, very close. Let's try the Volstead here. Oh, they're close. The Volstead and the Five are very, very close. The Volstead is was when I, you know when I first tried it, I thought it was just absolutely delicious. The problem was it was two hundred bucks, and it was really hard to get. Um, but for a fourteen-year MGP blend, it was you know I've always loved this bottle. Now this, this is down the bottle pretty far, so I'm not really sure if it's a fair comparison, but the Volstead to me is doesn't have the depth that actually the five is bringing. What you do taste in the Volstead is the age, you taste the chocolate, you taste the, the sweet oak, but I don't know, something about the Remus five just has a little bit more depth and nuance to it. So overall, I think the five is just a, an amazing combination of both three and four but the differentiator is like that sweet oak note that it brings to kind of overlay the whole experience. Again, it could be a little bit oaky, maybe at some point for some of you, but overall, an amazing blend. Uh, let's go to the final breakdown. All right, guys, so for the final breakdown price, 90 bucks. Like I said, we had a slight increase from 85. Secondary market value, I've seen these as high as 150. Not sure if this is gonna stay that way or get a little bit higher because of the ages of bourbon that are in this bottle but I really haven't seen these yet. As far as availability, I think this is getting better with, with Luxco acquiring the brands uh, from MGP. Luxco does have a great marketing you know, system in place, so I think we'll see more coverage of the Remus labels as we go down, a bigger presence in the market. Uh, but I do think the secret is out on this stuff. I think people have realized what is actually in this bottle, uh, especially with a lot, you know, people like me and other reviewers just talking how great it is for the price. So I think the secret's out on it. So even though the availability is getting better, 
when it hits or when it drops, it's gonna sell fast. When it comes to value, I mean, it's pretty easy. The value is very high. I mean, you're looking at 13, 14, 15 year old bourbons in this blend from MGP, one of the greatest distilleries on the planet. Uh, again, people that are paying 200, 300, 400, I've seen uh, people paying as high as 900, $1,000 for, for 12 to 15 year old sourced MGP. And it's just right here for 90 bucks. All right, so what's the most I'd pay here? I'm, I love that it's at, at 90, but I, I have already seen these price a little bit higher from about 100 to $120. Even at that price, I still think it's a great pickup. All right, is it a recommend? Hell freaking yes. If you guys, if anybody out there could find this bourbon, it's an immediate add to your shelf. Uh, the only knock I've heard about this series is folks wish it's a higher proof or cast strength instead of 100 proof. Listen, I think the high rye mash bill defies that theory a bit, given that there's plenty of spice uh, in this bourbon. And while it's not cast strength, it's one of the more impressive 100 proof or below bourbons I've ever had. Easily one of my favorites this year. It's definitely lived up to my expectations. Now listen, you can go out, you could spend, you know, an exorbitant amount of money on a lot of these special releases, you know, but, you know, I hate to freaking bring it up, but you know, the, the Colonel Taylor Warehouse C from Buffalo Trace, people are selling that shit for $33,000. Are you kidding me? It's a 10 year old bourbon. You're basically buying Eagle Rare. This is 13, 14, 15 year old bourbon. The same proof as Colonel Taylor, 100 proof from MGP for 90 bucks. I'm just saying, go get it. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this review for the brand new Remus Repeal 5. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know if you've picked this up yet, what you think of it. Uh, absolutely love it. Before we go, I'm gonna make Mega Remus Blend. I'm gonna blend three, four, five, and I'm gonna blend that Volstead into one beautiful glass. Oh my God. I'm gonna try this. That's good. Oh, that's really good. Oh, all the butterscotch in the back end. Hell yeah. It is not about the whiskeys and people you share it with. Go buy some, share it with your friends. Absolutely stellar release from Remus. One of my favorites this year so far. Cheers, everybody. See you next time.